Welcome back, everybody. It's Gator the Legend, as always. And uh, believe it or not, I just realized earlier today that today marks the eight-year anniversary of the Kickstarter crap about Gator Poon that iDubs did. And I figured, uh, why not take a trip down memory lane? To say the journey has been long would be a massive understatement, you know? When I started this whole thing, it, it was just me. It was just me. I wanted to do cringy videos, and I wanted to talk about movies and TV shows and stuff, and that, that was basically it. So that's why my very first video ever was the Friday Dance Party. And you can ask people who know me. Obviously, you can't. But if you did, they would tell you that I said I wanted to make the absolute worst video on YouTube to start it off. That way I knew for sure that I could only go up from there. So the four minute long me dancing with the, the camera like this, filming on a potato or an iPhone negative five, whatever the hell it was, uh, that was my attempt of making the cringiest worst video ever. And um, I, I, I think I, I stand by that. I still think that it's, it's got to be up there. It's got to be top 10 cringiest videos even today. You have to remember that this was at the beginning of 2015. I don't care what anyone says, there was no one out there purposely being cringy. Like There was no one who dedicated a channel and made sure that the editing, the filming, everything was going to be this massive cringy event, basically. But that's what I wanted to do. And I, I, I kind of got lonely really quick. So there were a couple guys at my work at the time that I thought were pretty hilarious and we always had a fun time kind of joking around and I talked to them about what I wanted to do. I'm like, hey, I want to make a purposely cringy channel, just something to goof off with and so other people can goof off and enjoy us just being a big old cringe fest and whatever, you know, 100% improv, if you will. Obviously, I'm talking about Poon and that guy, uh, which, by the way, our names, here's how they came to be in case uh, you haven't caught me talking about it in a live stream or some past video. Gator came from kind of a lame reason. I used to be really into college football and I was a huge Florida Gators fan. Um, I haven't really cared about college football in a long time. I'm just 100% NFL now, but that's irrelevant. So people called me Gator, the Gator, like whatever. Not not very many people, just a couple people. Uh, but I thought Gator would be a funny thing to go by. And then Poon, we actually called him Harpoon. Uh, and we, we were going to do Gator Harpoon or Harpoon Gator. And I was like, that's not funny enough. Let's drop the har and just, let's just keep the poon. Let's do poon gator or gator poon. And we all know what poon means. So obviously we were like, we got to do that one. It's hilarious. As far as that guy, I literally, when he was getting into the videos, I looked at him and I said, Hey, what do you want your name to be? And he goes, that guy. I go, what guy? And he goes, that guy. I'm like, just, just the words that guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm that guy. And I was like, all right, you're that guy. So then there you were, the Gator Poon crew was created and we started making a lot of fun videos. And yes, a lot of it was just us rambling on to each other. But again, we're, we're just trying to have a good time. Um, but we started getting some views, not, not a ton. Uh, if you watch the Kickstarter crap, you'll see that he says, you know, they're getting somewhere like 50, 100 views or whatever on the vids. But to us, that was insane. I'm like, who are these random people watching this cringy shit? We couldn't freaking believe it. So we were very excited about it. Well, other people were excited about it too. So a, a particular person who you never saw on the channel uh, had the idea, hey, you know what? You, you should put that it's 100% improv in all the descriptions that way people know that what you're trying to do is improv obviously that didn't work out very well for us the same person is the same person who came up with the idea that we should do a kickstarter a kickstarter crap a kickstarter campaign for it i was like hesitant at first but i had just seen where zach braff who was uh, jd on scrubs had done a kickstarter based on just an idea that he had for a movie. He goes, I have this idea for a movie, and, you know, I'm doing this Kickstarter, and if you guys, you know, give me some money, I'll be able to make this movie, write this movie, do all this stuff. And I was like, he hasn't really done anything, and people are willing to give money just because they're excited about what idea he might have. Uh, so when the suggestion to do a Kickstarter uh, was given to me, that's all I knew about Kickstarter, to be honest with you. So I was like, sure, I'll do it. And I spent like five minutes creating a little page or whatever. It said I had to do award tiers. I didn't want to, but I said I had to. So I just quickly did that. I didn't do the math, people. I didn't do the math. But anyways, uh, irrelevant. I put that up there. I Not at once did I think, I, I wasn't trying to be greedy or anything, but I, I was genuine. I, I wanted to make better content. I should have explained that better, uh, that I actually would like to have scripted content and like put stories together and everything and maybe make a video talking about that instead of just uploading some video that we didn't even want to upload to our channel. That probably, uh, you know, in hindsight, that wasn't a great idea, but, but you know, 
it, it really wasn't anything to us. And I created it and I walked away from it. I didn't even think about it anymore. It, a couple weeks later, or I can't remember exactly how long it was after that, but we kind of got tired of making videos and we, we started making less and less. And then we stopped making videos altogether for like almost a month. It's important to know that before YouTube, I, it was Vine. That's the thing that got me really into it, you know, like uh, into making videos, if you will. Uh, and I did so well over there. I was getting all kinds of views. I had 10,000 people following me and all that fun stuff. And then, of course, the same thing that happened to every other Viner happened to me. And that is Vine ended. And when Vine ended, all these Viners, including myself, had no choice but to go to YouTube. But it was a different world, a completely different world. Vine was a wild, wild world. West. You could just do whatever the hell you wanted in five, six, seven seconds, whatever the hell it was, and no one gave a shit. It, it, it was just, I, I don't know, it, it, I, I miss Vine. How can you not miss Vine if you were a Viner? I bet every, every Viner out there turn YouTuber, no matter how famous they are now, will tell you that they miss Vine. So we hadn't made a video in uh, almost a month or three weeks, whatever the hell it was. I, I think iDubs actually mentions it in one of the videos he made, uh, or in the first Kickstarter crap video that he made about us. And uh, I wanted to keep making videos, and I planned on making videos, even if it meant by myself at some point. But Gatorpoon, we were kind of done. Like, we had moved on. Because believe it or not, I know this seems difficult to believe, but those videos did not take long for us to make. So people who thought that we weren't working at our job, you were very mistaken. We were working very hard at our job all the time. And during our lunch breaks, during our time off, sometimes we would stay after on a shift, we would make these videos. So, because it was just fun and we liked hanging out together. We definitely weren't taking time off the clock, you know? My boss knew we were doing it. By the way, he was the one who made the 100% improv suggestion. Uh, just FYI. So, so that wasn't the issue. And then suddenly, uh, I, I'm sitting there at my desk one day. I'm working. I'm making phone calls because I'm a salesman. And I start seeing notifications popping on my phone like crazy. Like, literally, it was like a hundred all at once. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? So the very second that I had a chance, I, I got on my phone. And I'm like, what is this all about? And I get on there. And all these people are just saying, kill yourself. You suck. Hey, uh, love for my dubs. Blah, blah, blah. Just all this crazy shit. And we find out, okay, uh, what's going on? There's a ton of hate. We're getting dislikes like fucking crazy. And then someone, I, I don't know who it is, but there was a comment at some point where they said, hey, have you seen iDubs made a video about you guys? And we were, I was like, what the hell? At this point, I didn't tell anybody yet. They were all working still or whatever. And I'm just sitting there taking a break, looking at this. And I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, iDubs made a video about us. I'm like, who the fuck is iDubs? So obviously I looked the guy up and I see that he has uh, like 90,000 subscribers. I'm like, this dude's a big deal. 90,000 subscribers is like a wet dream to me. I, honestly, even today, like what, what am I at? 7,000 something after eight plus years? <laughs> a little embarrassing. But I went and saw it and I'm like, holy shit. So before I watched the video, I had to go grab the other guys. And not only did I grab the other guys, our whole office wanted to see this. So we all hover around my phone. I, I prop it up and I'm like, you guys ready? Someone made a video about us. Boop, play. We had no idea what we were about to see. No clue whatsoever. But I tell you what, th this is the honest truth. The entire time we watched that video, all of us were laughing. Every one of us just cracking up laughing. I literally had tears coming out of my eyes from laughing so hard. I, it was just so good. And that moment, like, I, I know the video was about me, but it was more than that. That's the moment that iDubs drew me in as a fan. I'm like, subscribe. Because I'm like, this guy has this kind of talent. I can only imagine what he's created and what he will create. I'm like, I got to follow this dude for sure. Afterwards, I look Poon right in the eyes and I go, we have to respond to this guy. We absolutely have to respond to this guy. First off, it, it's probably going to get us some fans, uh, probably get us some likes, probably probably get us some comments, some, maybe some good comments, I don't know, but we got to respond to this guy. And Poon goes, yeah, gr uh, that's that's a great idea. Let's let's take his advice. Let's let's uh, make a nice video. We'll script it. We'll edit it. And, and it'll be like, hey, look, guys, we took all of his advice. We appreciate his criticism. And I looked at him like he's an idiot. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? This dude watched all of our videos. 
He found our Kickstarter crap, and, and he made this awesome, epic video about it. And you want to respond with us being completely different people than the people he just painted for his whole audience to see? Like, what are you thinking, Poon? As they say, hindsight's 2020, and I am willing to admit that the Poon was 100% correct, because I was so dead certain that all of iDubs fans and everyone out there would see that we were clearly being sarcastic and joking around. Like, I I at one point say, oh, what are you, you think you're better than us because you're a fancy YouTuber guy and you know, you know how to type and uh, click, click, click with a mouse and Poon's all like, oh yeah, out there on the interwebs. Well, no one talks like that. Why did people think we talked like that? Like, that, that might have been the most insulting part is that they honestly thought that we could be that dumb and still somehow upload a video to YouTube. I don't think those two things can happen, guys. I uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Either way, we love that he, he did that. We, we gave our epic response. We named it epic response because we knew it wasn't. We knew it wasn't. I said, that guy, interrupt us halfway through this video and just like, I, I don't know, roast us. Roast us and be like a big iDubs fan. And he did it. He did it perfectly. And people think, people genuinely think that he was like against us. He's part of the Gator Poon gang, guys. He made lots of videos with us after that too. Like, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit sensitive, but uh, not... Not really. I don't know. It was. It was. It was fun. It was. It was awesome. Uh, even though a, a lot of hate followed, and then the most unexpected thing happened. Idubs responded to us. Like, but I would have bet a billion dollars he wasn't going to respond to us back then. But he responded to our epic response, and he starts it off. He's he literally put a black shirt on, and he starts it off all like this. He's like, ah. Oh, Sorry guys, uh, today I'm holding a funeral or something like that because he was ready to bury us. And oh my gosh, I, like I, at this point I had watched a lot of his videos because I wanted to know the guy. And uh, this vid, I'll, I'll argue to this day, and people can say whatever they want. This isn't me being like, oh, you know, I, I'm just doing this because it's Gator Poon. But I actually think that that video might be the best video he's ever made because it was just so brilliant, so comedically perfect he makes up the nicknames for us he goes forever frat bro that was me because i'm wearing these stupid sunglasses and then he said uh, uh fat gomi which a little bit racist probably shouldn't have done that in hindsight but whatever it, it was funny and then he called uh poon uh luke wilson's autistic brother or whatever uh, it was just it was so funny. And Poon lied in our epic response video, acting like we called up iDubs as if we had his phone number and talked to him. So then iDub says, yeah, well, I'm calling your bluff. Here's the recording. And he took bits and pieces of shit Poon and said, and he spliced it in there with a phone call he was having with him. And it was just, I, I was just in awe. I was just in awe all and i lost it it was the funniest shit i have ever fucking seen at the time like the fucking and he made poon seem so fucking funny like even funnier than he is i'm gonna be honest with you with the whole if you have some food left over you can put it in the fridge that's not a response to i dub saying can you put an adult on the phone and then you're just randomly says be fucking responsible. I still say that. I still say that shit. You know, if you don't like it, well, accept it. Uh, which he made he made a a meme of accept it because because we got drunk at lunch one time and made a video later and Poon just slurred his words a bit, but it's fucking hilarious. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. That's when the fun really started. That's that motivated us to get back into making videos clearly, but it also motivated me to put more effort into making these videos make sense, you know, to put some kind of theme to them, to, to edit them a bit and everything else. Once we gave him the response where it was unedited, and I told Poon from the gig, I go, this is the last one we'll do that's just us being idiots, you know, like just cringy shit. Let's like, it was still cringy. Let's still be cringy because I fucking love being cringy. Gosh darn it, I love being cringy. To this day, I love being cringy. I want to make you cringe. Get over it. Whatever. Anyways, but I'm like, let's edit it. Let's let's make more refined videos, at least the best we can on an iPhone negative five, you know? And considering it was still 2015, I don't think what we did was that bad. We did a little uh, Dawson Creek, uh, you know, theme song, uh, like parody or whatever, which I thought was pretty funny. I still enjoy it. Uh, we also did, a, you know, the 
the way of the ninja or the epic oh my gosh what was it called battle of the century or whatever between that guy and the other guy which was someone else who was on the channel like in two videos or whatever um which i thought was really well edited we actually got someone else to edit that for us but it, it was pretty good and then we also started our haters gonna hate series which oh my gosh that turned into a whole nother thing later on which we will touch base on that in a little bit. So everything seemed to be going so well for a while. And we obviously we were getting like just, oh my gosh, dump trucks worth of hate every single day. People telling us to kill ourselves, telling us we suck, telling us we're a disgrace. Honestly, I'm being, I don't, I can't even tell you. Go back and look at a couple of our, like any of our videos from years ago. And you will find the most vile stuff ever. Like anyone who's ever complained about hate comments they have, I, I challenge them. I challenge them, no matter how famous they are, no matter how much hate they think they've received, I challenge you to look at the hate on my videos from back then and say that you've had it worse. Fuck you, no you fucking haven't. But but we were we didn't care, you know? We, we really didn't. Uh, I didn't realize that I'd at some point care, but at that point, I didn't care because we were gaining subscribers every day. We were gaining views every day. And I said, just look at the like. Look at the likes, man. Don't look at the dislikes, guys. Just look at the likes. Look at that. 45 people liked our video. Yeah, 900 disliked it. But 45 people liked it, you know? that That's 45 people. You know, it's, That's not bad, you know, for a small channel, you know? Uh, but at a certain point, I guess the other guys thought that I was the thing holding them back, which... I was the one coming up with the ideas for the video. I was the one editing it, filming it, doing everything. I I know it may seem like we didn't have a lot that we were doing at that point, but we were. Like it, it took a lot of work for me to do these things. I was the one responding to every single comment I got, even if it was hate, I was responding to it every single time. You hate me? That's fine. Thank you for stopping by. Sorry you didn't like it. I hope the next channel you come across is great. Whatever it is, I, I just liked that people were participating and that we were having this human connection, even if it was a little bit of hate coming from people, you know? And I can't even tell you the number of people that came and left hate that I was nice to and not, not rude to that ended up saying, you know what? I didn't realize you were a chill dude. I, I subscribed and I'm your fan. And some of those people are Gator Knights to this day. And some of those people I literally owe being able to stay and keep doing this to. The, the people that came here to hate on me because of iDubs are also the same people that kept me going for fucking years. So Poon and that guy thought they were going to get the old gator to just stay behind the camera. Well, how'd that work out for you, boys? Well, they ended up quitting. They thought that I was going to, you know, play a little stalemate, play a little chicken with me, that I would just bend and give them what they want. That I'd say, okay, guys, out there behind the camera, and you guys be the stars of my own fucking channel. Eh, no, that's not how it fucking works, guys. So, yeah, they, they left. They left, and then they came with their threats. They came with their threats, you know. Poon was all like, oh, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to so yeah, I got a lawyer, I got paperwork. If you don't take Poon out of the title of your channel, well, uh, I'm suing you for it and you're going to have to pay me money for my likeness, blah, blah, fucking blah. And I was like, I don't think this is fucking real, but whatever, motherfucker, you want me to remove it? I'll fucking remove it. And that's why the fucking video, The End of the Poon, exists. Go watch it if you want to know what the fuck I'm talking about. That motherfucker left, that motherfucker threatened me, and you know what? That's the day the legend was born. I'm not gonna lie though, guys, I was I was absolutely heartbroken. As, as I told you earlier in this video, I, I was lonely. I, I didn't want to do videos by myself, you know? Like, I loved that I was doing videos with some friends. I loved that we were making content together, and it absolutely sucked that, the, that it went this way. Then they didn't want to do videos anymore, you know? And, and I, I know it's because of the hate. They thought that their idea would somehow turn this into a direction that would get rid of the hate. But obviously that was very naive, so naive when, when you consider the rest of this journey. So now I was on my own, you know, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I didn't have any direction of where to go. I was just sitting there every day watching tons of hate show up on my channel, watching tons of people trying to tell me how I should do it, what I should do, all this other stuff, so-called advice, but really it was just, it was driven by negativity and 
I tried to feed off the negativity in a positive way, but you know, that wears on you after years, you know, it really, really does. But at the time I, I kept making videos anyways. I kept making stuff I wanted to make. I, you know, my favorite song ever is Africa by Toto. So I pretended to make a workout uh, video with me dance into that and it's just it's stupid but it was fun you know I started my Driftless Reflection series which to this day only has four videos but it's my favorite series because when I was in school when I was younger the one thing people loved about my humor was how random it was it was always something they never heard and no one ever did and you know even if it was cringy they, they enjoyed it and so I looked up what random thoughts like synonyms to the word random synonyms to the word thoughts and that's where I found Driftless Reflection so I wanted it to be random thoughts so first one's genuinely just random thoughts after that it's like random skits if you will uh but man it was so much fun to do that because it felt so unique and so out there and it felt like no one's gonna match this and then i saw snl's californians and i wanted to do a spoof of that so i did gators of our lives as a spoof but i had so much fun playing all these different characters or whatever that i decided to ditch the laugh track and continue on like this was a serious it was a serious daytime soap opera you know like uh, whatever and create this whole story so i, I love doing gators of our lives that was so much fun and i continued the haters gonna hate but with a new idea of the further in i got with the haters gonna hate which is me just responding to haters comments the the more and more that my responses would literally be which it was, it was like this from the get-go even with poon uh just me making it worse on myself that was the whole goal every response response I give was me making the hate even worse on myself instead of actually combating it. And also as I went along, I decided I wanted to become that character to become more and more insane to the point of like just breaking. So as I keep forging forward, I started noticing in the comments that I'm getting the same people popping up with love in every video. And I'm like, whoa, holy shit. I'm like, I have some real fans here. And then I started noticing that some of these real fans were small YouTubers that just saw my perseverance and they were like motivated by that. And they would say all these things like, hey man, I, I love that you keep going. You're, you're getting better and all this other stuff. And that stuff, that really fueled me, you know, that, that kept me going even when it was really hard. So I wanted to do something to give back to these people. And so I started something called a uh, small channel promotions, something like that. And small YouTuber pr promotions. And I would take a channel that was small. I, I would take some of their videos and I would promote them in a video because I felt like people need to know about these small channels. I, of course, kept it to people with less subscribers than me uh, so that I could get some awareness to them. And they have they all signed up for it. They all approved it. They said, let's go. And, and it was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed doing it. it. It was fun. It was a way to get back. And I really felt like I, I was helping people, which I, I just loved that feeling. It was so good. Uh, and, and so I, I did that for a little while, but then I kind of got away from that and just kind of stuck to doing vlogs for a while, car vlogs, things like that. My weight had gotten out of control. I gained a bunch of weight back after losing 100 pounds. I was feeling depressed. I was I was working technically at two locations and I was driving uh, for half a week. I was away from my family and driving far away and then coming back. And it, it, it was just, it was so hard to make content, but I wanted to keep going. I didn't want to give up on my channel, you know? I had been through so much that I just didn't want to give up, so I'm, I'm making just some, it's not even cringy. Like, the videos at that point were just becoming sad, uh, but I, I didn't care. I wanted to keep giving my fans something because I kept thinking about those small YouTubers, and I kept thinking about those people that comment on every video, and they didn't leave me. They stayed there, and they kept commenting, and they kept supporting, and it's, thank you, Thank you. You guys know who you are and thank you so much because I needed that more for more than just keeping the channel going like that helped me just on a personal level. And uh, just I'm forever grateful for that because that was a that was a hard time to get through. Then things in my life started to calm down and I started really getting back into it. You know, I was making all these skits and doing all these random ideas that I loved and uh, just being silly again and having fun with it again. And as I was going along, it's like I started building a bigger fan base, but the hate was still there. And it's been like a couple years and it just was still so much. Every single video I had ever put out had a way larger amount of dislikes than likes. And I never hid that either. I, I don't like that YouTube doesn't show the dislikes. And I know that might be stupid or whatever, because 
it wouldn't be good for me. But I, I wanted, I kind of like that people love that I persevered, that I didn't give up. Some people thought I was an idiot for it, but I, the people who didn't and that were like, wow, that's, that's actually pretty impressive, Gator. Like, I, I, I like that. I like being able to show where I came from. But it had been a couple years at this point, and man, oh man, I, I was putting out stuff I thought was good. I thought that was quality, and it was still was so much hate. Like, before there was even time to watch a video, I was getting pounded with dislikes and negative comments. Like, they weren't even watching. They're just showing up to hate me. And it, it's just, it'd been over two years. I'd been through all this stuff we just talked about, and I was just, like, done with it. I was just so fucking done with it. So I decided to make a video where I kind of talked about that, talked about how it got to me, talked about how it was difficult watching that. And I entitled it, I've Done My Time. You, you can watch it if you want to. It's called I've Done My Time. I'm like this in it or something. I don't know, whatever. And I, I talked about it. And the most surprising fucking thing happened. I received like over 300 likes on this video within like a day. And it didn't even have like a ton of views, you know, a couple thousand, which I know is good. But uh, compared to a lot of the other videos that would get a similar amount of likes, it took tens of thousands of views to get there. This had over 300 likes and the dislikes were like 30. And I was like, what? What, what just happened? Like, it, it was so crazy. And all these comments of like, just fucking love and just. This is just so fucking awesome. And like, I, I fucking like, I teared up. I was just so overwhelmed by this. And it, it was such a great feeling. I ended up making a video called like the forgiveness of an army or something like that. Talking about how the IDubs army had finally forgiven me. And they did. And they did. Of course, hate and dislikes have followed me to this day. Uh, but like, I started getting more likes than dislikes on all my videos after that. And I mean, if I would have known, I would have done it sooner. But on the same level, like I doubt it would have worked if I did it sooner. It was just good timing. And I, I had stopped for a long time at this point doing the channel promotions for the for the small YouTubers. But I, I started feeling it again because all those small YouTubers were still following me. And even more small YouTubers were following me. They were like not not looking up to me. I, I don't know the right word, but they, but they love me and they give me so much support. And I wanted to give back to them. And at the time I had learned about, uh, you know, Keemstar and there's a couple other ones. I can't remember all their names. The little news channel things that uh, only talk about news with big YouTubers. And I was like, no one does one for small YouTubers. No one does that. I looked for it. No one did it. So so I created small tuber news. And to be honest, this was the peak of my channel. This was the greatest I had ever felt. This was the greatest moment. This was the greatest time that I ever had doing these small tuber news videos. They, but they took a week to create one because you had to find small YouTubers that had some news to report, some stuff going on, you know, or they're hitting a tier on subs. And I would also find small YouTubers that made music and I'd play that on the outro and I would promote all these small YouTubers. And all of a sudden I found this huge community of small YouTubers I didn't even know existed and I, I became part of it and it, it was beautiful. It was amazing and I, I started doing live streams every Wednesday night, Gator Nights Live and man, it was so much fun. I'd have hundreds of people join. I would be drinking, I, we'd be singing and karaoke and having a blast. You know, I, I would read children's books and tear them apart from a very practical point of view which doesn't work with children's books because it's easy to tear them apart when you're trying to like be logical with it. Um, and I don't know. We just had so much fun. We built a great community. We were helping each other grow and everything else. I went on a lot of other people's channels and live streams and man, oh man, it was a lot of fun. I even got to meet up with Michael Fayer Jr. who was such a great, nice dude. He drove out to Ohio and we did a, a video together and I did a live stream with him. And man, it was just the, the time of my life, if you will. Like it was just everything I wanted on YouTube and everything I wanted to keep doing. I just wanted to keep doing that forever and ever and ever. And, and, and then just like with everybody else, 2020 hit a little background about me and mental health history, if you will. Uh, my, my little brother, my biological dad, both suffer from extreme bipolar. And somehow, I, I've i been so fortunate and lucky to not have bipolar. My whole life, I, like, uh, bipolar wasn't a thing. And, you know, obviously at this point, I, I'm in my 30s, so I'm thinking, you can't just become bipolar. Actually, I didn't think about it at all, but if I would have thought about it, I'd be like, you can't just randomly become bipolar. Uh, but I was wrong. 
I don't know if it was the stress or whatever, because I manage an office that's uh, filled with salespeople who's mo like a good portion of their money is based on commission. And when 2020 hit, guess what? Commission dried up. These people couldn't survive based on this because it was so hard to get sales. So one by one, I, I like to joke around, say it was like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The Oompa Loompas would come out and take another one of my people away. And my pay is largely based on what they do. And suddenly... There was no one there. So I'm working 55, 60 hours a week from then until now. I'm still doing that because I have no one. I don't have a staff. It's still so hard to find people willing to take a risk on a commission job, especially uh, my particular job where you have to get a license through the state to even do it. So I, I, I don't know what it was, but something in my brain must have fucking clicked the wrong way. And I started living in these weeks worth of mania. And I stopped caring about things that I used to love and care so much about. I didn't care about YouTube. I didn't care about fantasy football, which is something I obsess over, all this stuff. And I started diving deep into science and space and politics and everything. I was on Facebook every day trying to convince people of my beliefs and what I'm all about. I was on Twitter telling my fans, if they don't believe the things I believe, then unsubscribe from me and leave me. And I lost some fucking fans I wish I could get back. And I apologize to you guys if you ever watch this. I, 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 I didn't know, but luckily though, because I spent my whole life not being bipolar... I knew something was fucking wrong. I was like months like this. So I started digging into it. I was researching everything, right? So I researched mental illness and I realized that uh, I found bipolar 2, which is uh, like bipolar, but you know, it's just a different version, bipolar 2. And I realized that what I've been doing, what I've been experiencing, my relationships with people in my real life, on YouTube, everything had changed uh, drastically. And if you watch my last haters gonna hate video, by the way, I was clearly manic. I know that in hindsight, I know I was manic in that video. Um, so that is the end of the haters gonna hate videos because I can't get crazier than that because I literally was crazy in that video. Uh, <laughs> but I went to a doctor, I got diagnosed. I started, you know, the whole, whenever you start, medication prescriptions for mental health stuff. You're kind of a guinea pig until they find what works for you. So I started that journey and it, it took a good year, but I finally got my shit right. I finally got control of my life. I don't miss taking my med. I don't miss a day taking my medicine. I stay on top of it and, and, and I'm good. There were times I was so depressed, you know, cause it's, it's a mood swing thing that I, I didn't want to be alive. I, I, and it was apathy. Look up apathy, man. It is just, it, it's an overwhelming feeling of apathy. I was done. I didn't care about anything. I didn't even want to get up to go take a piss because what was the fucking point? It was so hard. It was so tough. And to think about making a video, are you fucking kidding me? Fuck YouTube. Fuck making a video. That's where I was at. And I was living there in my channel. I left it. I left it for a long, long time. And I kept telling myself I'd get back to it at some point. I'd get back to it at some point, but I kept having to work all these hours. I kept having to do all this stuff, and I, I, I was worried. I, I was worried. If I get back into YouTube, if I get back into YouTube and I add it with all these hours, I add it with all the stress and everything, uh, w what if something goes wrong, you know? What if the medication isn't enough? I don't want to throw away my life, my family, my job, everything because of this mental illness, because I go manic and I start thinking everybody has the worst thoughts about me and everything you say, you say, Hey, how are you? And I'm like, what the fuck do they mean by that? What the fuck do you mean by that? I know what you mean by that. You hate me. You fucking think some shit. Like it was crazy. It was so tough, so tough, but I got through it. I got through it. By the time I got through it though, I, I was a completely different human being, a completely different person than I was before. And I, it was like I was starting all over again. I was nervous and shy and worried about making videos. And I was also worried about getting back into making videos, but then immediately not wanting to make any more videos. Like I, I didn't want to keep doing these giant periods of time where I wasn't putting videos out. So just to keep YouTube off my back, I would re-upload some stuff or do a random live stream here and there. But like, I, I just, I, I was so just, I, I wasn't done. I wanted to come back. I wanted to do small tuber news again, but I told you it took a week to do one video the way I wanted to do it. And the time just doesn't exist in my life. It's why I still haven't made one yet. It's why I don't do Gators of our uh, Gators, not Gator night live. And so many things I, I wish I could do. I don't do it because I don't have the time and I don't want to risk my, my mental health for it. 
So that brings us to January of this year. I, I received this email notification from YouTube telling me that I uh, have gone too long without uploading content and all this other stuff and that they were going to demonetize me. And one of the things I always thought was so cool and I always kind of brag to people, I'm like, yeah, man, uh, technically I make money on YouTube. I'm monetized. I got monetized on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. And they said they were going to take it away unless I hit it within 90 days or whatever. And I don't know what it was, but that like super motivated me to, to do something. And I saw that YouTube had started doing shorts and I hadn't watched any shorts. I hadn't gotten into the shorts game or anything. So I didn't even know what they were. And then I started getting into it and I start realizing that shorts was like Vine. People tried to convince me TikTok was like Vine. I went over to TikTok and made some. TikTok is not like Vine. TikTok is a pay to play fucking thing, first off. Like, you can literally go into the promotion thing and pay for views, pay for followers, pay for shit. You're never going to get ahead if you don't have the money to sink into that shit. You can't just get there based on people loving your personality or creativity. You have to pay some fucking money or hit the lottery, or I don't fucking know. So, fuck TikTok. But these shorts, I'm like, oh, wow, I can, I, I can treat it like Vine again. I can just put out random thoughts, random ideas. Who gives a shit? People won't care if they're shitty and if they do, they'll love it, whatever. I don't care. And I kind of created this and I decided I was going to do that. I was going to do it. And it takes no time at all. It's so, it takes such a small amount of my time. And I looked up the algorithm, what they're looking for and everything. And I, I'm trying to like do it the way they like it to the, for the most part. And I decided I was going to put three out a day since they're so easy to make. And I've been doing that ever since. Uh, tomorrow uh, at 1230, my 400th short this year will be airing and it just feels so great to be making something. It may not be what I actually want to make per se, but I'm making something. My YouTube channel's active. This year I've done several live streams. I've put out several videos. Most of them are vlog type. Actually, I think all of them are vlog type things like this because they're quicker and easier. Again, I don't have a ton of time, but these shorts are so nice. I can do them in my car. I park my car almost every single time, guys. I'm not doing anything dangerous, uh, but it's fun and I'm getting a uh, tons of subs from it, tons of subscribers from it and everything. Of course, the views are far off from what I'm going to need to hit to be monetized because of that. But once I get monetized because of the shorts views, I, I'll be monetized across the channel and maybe I can get back into making other videos. If I can start making some revenue off of this or I can start finding some employees, uh, I'll be back to a point where I can I can make some some videos and stuff that I want to make. You know, if I just get back to 40 hours a week working uh, and not being so stressed, um, that's what I want to do. And I still, I, I have faith and hope that we're going to get there. I really believe we will. Uh, it's been a long journey, a long, long journey for sure. I don't know what makes someone a legend per se. Um, I named myself Gator the Legend just because I thought at the time that I went from Vine I went from making videos myself. I did Gator Poon. I got roasted by iDubs twice. I, 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 Gator Poon fell apart. And I was like, man, what a journey. What a legendary story. I'm Gator the legend. What a legend, right? And I got to tell you, I, I had no idea the kind of journey you could go through. Here we are eight years later. And man, oh man, what a journey. And uh, so I think... At least in my own way, I, I, I've done it. I, you know, I've lived up to the name Gator the Legend. Uh, at least I hope so. I, I don't know. If you guys are going to base that solely off of subs and views, then I haven't. But if you want to base it off of a journey, I think that I'm a legend. But that could be delusions of grandeur, which is a symptom of bipolar. And I'm just, guys, I love and appreciate every single person that has ever watched a video of mine that has ever liked, disliked, common love or hate everything we're all human beings we're all connected we're all one you know like we are meant to run in a pack just like wolves we're meant to be pack animals and that's why i wanted to do this with people and i was naive to think i wasn't doing it with people when i was alone because i was doing it with you guys i was doing it with you guys and you guys were there with me and you're still there with me and I'm forever grateful. And if you've made it to this point of this video, bra fucking oh, thank you so much. You're a true Gator Knight. I don't care if it's your first time at the channel or whatever. This is a long video. So you are a true Gator Knight for sticking in there. And if you have any questions, you want to know anything else, drop some comments. I, I, I'll, 
I'll respond to every single one of them because that's what the gator does. Um, if it, you know what though, I, I, I have started deleting certain comments. If you're going to be vile and negative and hateful, I, if, if it's funny, if it's for the sake of humor, that's one thing. But if it's just for those other reasons, you're done. I won't block you. I won't even block your comments. But I'll delete every one that you leave that's like that because other people read that. It's not just me being affected. Other people see that shit and it affects them too. And I just, over the years, realized that a bit foolish of me to leave that stuff up. But I, I, I guess I just didn't want to make people more mad at me, you know? Everyone seemed so upset with me for a very long time. But we made it through. Here I am. The journey continues, right? Uh, the the Gator, the legend continues. Uh, hopefully for another eight years. Uh, I'll do another one of these when it hits ten years. I'll skip year nine, but I'll do another, not, not this long, but another celebration. Because a decade after iDubs made that video should be celebrated, um, in my opinion. So, until then, I love you guys. So very much. Thank you so very much. And as always, I've been the Gator, and you've been great. Peace.